and see in this whatever in the curriculum or the syllabus people are learning. But you just go and Google something about us, you are your force analysis. Very quite very few people are working in that. And that too. Uh, you, you have some softwares developed uh, uh, like uh, have you come across Adams analysis uh, dynamics of machines, work model at 3D, work model at 3D. All these things are uh, taking care about your force analysis. Before you do a uh, mechanism, you have, you have a simple power bar mechanism or a simple slider crank mechanism. You need to understand what will be the force exerted and the, how, how the force is going to get transferred. What are the different types of uh, reactions that takes place in the individual member? Then only you can convert a reduced uh, weight. So the uh, thing is uh, the relationship between your uh, external forces and uh, the standard mechanism you need to understand. And the objective is to understand the undesirable effect of unbalances. This is very very important. See, when there is a trouble in a mechanical system, what is the mechanical system? It will be always moving. And the uh, professor was also mentioning about. Uh, he has a very good view about you. Uh, what are the topics you are very interested? He told about. Uh, Balancing of rotating masses, you, you are so interested and you have learned a lot discussed. But you have some difficulties in the reciprocating masses. See, that is very, very important. See, unbalancing. So, what is balancing is uh, if you are not balancing, it becomes unbalancing. You very well. Nowadays, uh, even your cars, right? Uh, earlier, uh, when I was, uh, I, I took a uh, what is that, uh, taxi to meet over here. So, the cab, uh, I was discussing about uh, some how many. Uh, how many kilometers that you travel with the car tire. See, uh, this is earlier you see a car tire uh, at uh, around 20,000, 25,000 kilometers people used to change the tires. So I, I come across, uh, this is my, uh, uh, what is that, uh, observation outside. They use the tire for around 50,000 kilometers or 60,000 kilometers they use a the tire. It's, uh, it's something different, how it is, uh, because uh, then and there you see there are plenty of uh, balancing Wheel alignment and wheel balancing shops are there. They, uh, uh, if you see some five years back, it's not so. So people don't think about the rigid cars they have. Now everywhere, see if the road is rough and tough like what you travel in this. Uh, and you are coming to a lot of practice. There is a testing road for uh, your different people. If you go uh, travel, what happens in reality? You get your wheels, uh, the balances will go. It will become an unbalance. It's not only here. Some sudden uh, hump or sudden. Uh, and even the uh, bounces there in the road will create this unbalance in the wheel. So that small unbalance from 10 grams or 20 grams of your car you will receive, that will lead to half of the life of your car. So this balancing is not so I am giving a very few examples. We will discuss about uh, how that will be. If it is having a uniform uh, cross-sectional uh, rim and there is no mass out in the center, it will be very quiet and it will be rotated. What you do is just to put on unwanted weight and one, one of the rim before you hold, uh, uh, build some material and stuff. If you wrote uh, what happens, there will be an excess uh, moment of inertia created by the particular mass that you try to move out and it wants to increase the radius of variation based on that there will be small uh, difference. So that will, it, it, it will try to dig into its shape but it, it cannot stop at the close location which will move to the other place. So that way you can see an axle when it is having an unbalanced wheel rotating so the shaft will be so not only this, any reciprocated motion can give you a vibration. So the best examples, uh, so you have come across uh, uh, washing machines, right? I, I could have a washing machine, some ABC. Uh, some four, four days before I got it uh, Kim, and the, the person who came here, he told, that was a very one mm deflection in the barrel. Only one, one mm. I, I just initially measured, right? Uh, the axis, if I can move, only one mm it is getting a shift. But the washing machine is moving away. You are running it, it is moving away, it is a front loading, so the axis is horizontal. So the weight is vibrating in the way so that the mass gives a jump. It is like a monster, it is moving. So a 1 mm in the deflection will give you a different center of rotation for the mass and that way it takes a moment. So more the speed you increase, you, are, you may get sometimes reduced vibrations, but sometimes at low speed with very heavy weight you are rotating on the outside. It will be, so the undesirable vibrations are nothing but the effect of what? Unbalanced. So if you don't have a balance, or a stability control, even on most of our uh, college students' buses, the school buses, they have something a speed governor is fit, right? Otherwise, uh, the, the driver may uh, have a crash, right? So these are some of the things which we are going to, and not only in a vehicle, uh, whereas somewhere, some, suppose if you are going to use a 
artificial uh, intelligence system or if you are going to see a generated system, uh, if you have uh, a flywheel like mass where you store an energy and take it out, that will be fluctuation of the energy. So in order to control the speed to make that uh, vibration or the energy to be dissipated in a, in a sequence of uh, running. So you need to understand about uh, what are the different types of speed controls in space. So once you come across these are these are set as the objectives for your dynamic sum machine. So once you complete this course, you should be aware about all these subjectives. So to overcome, so the method of static force and dynamic force analysis are are very very uh, important for understanding the relationship of force and the undesirable effects of unbalance in both cars and engines are to be understood. And to concept of vibratory systems and the techniques for studying motion of machine and machine components. Know the use uh, use of computer software package in modern design. So we start with this uh, static force analysis. So the teacher has already been discussed. I will just uh, give you about a uh, yeah, refreshing uh, uh, discussion. So in a static force analysis, uh, you know uh, static equilibrium. So the static equilibrium is based on your Newton's uh, uh, first law. Yeah, body is in static equilibrium if uh, all the forces, it's in static state, we are not considering about any acceleration or any movement. And uh, the force acting on the rigid body, the sum of all the forces is equal to zero or the resultant is equal to zero. So this condition can be expressed uh, mathematically by, you can write, sum of all the forces is equal to zero and as well as sum of all the moment will also be equal to zero, then it is meant that the system, whatever the system is a reciprocatory piston, what is your slide crank mechanism or anything else. So if you put at any stage, if you calculate uh, your sum of all the forces is equal to zero, sum of all the moment equal to zero, then it is said to be in static equilibrium at that static condition. In space, suppose if this is in a space, so we are not talking about a linear uh, thing, it can, it can be occupying a two plane. Two, uh, two axis and it may be in a plane or it may be in a three dimensional. So, if that is the case, sum of all the forces in the x axis, moment about all the forces in the x axis, sum of all the forces in y axis and z axis, so all to be together. So, you need these six conditions if you satisfy. So, these are the two uh, vector equations. So, in space, these two vector equations yields six scalar quant uh, equations. So, these are the scalar equations which we need to test to identify whether it is in static equilibrium or not. So in a planar, you know that it is reduced to only the x uh, axis force in x axis force in y axis and the moment about the z axis if you could check that is there. So in a two force system, these are very simple that you have basic you have studied in your engineering mechanics but anyway I will just review that one. So in a coplanar force system under which the body acted on a, uh, uh, acts on uh, is in equilibrium, we have the following force system. So two force member we call this as one force is F1 is acting in this direction with magnitude and direction and this F2 is in magnitude and direction. So this is called as your two force system. So to satisfy the sum of forces to be equal to zero, what you should have is the force one and the force two should be equal and uh, it should be in uh, opposite direction. So the sum of uh, the torque is equal to zero. What, it, what you want. So this is some, either you can see the, the force should be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction is needed for your uh, force summation. Whereas to satisfy the torque what we need is that should not be, uh, the distance between these two force should be what? Zero. The perpendicular distance between the two forces should be zero. It should be collinear. Otherwise what happens it is like uh, for example uh, you, you have a, a steering wheel, you have your hand, one hand in one uh, side, uh, another hand opposite to that one. So if you are having two distances, if you do the apply a force in the downward, apply a force in the upward, what happens? It happens to rotate. So there will be a moment created by these two forces if they are acting. Uh, imagine that you are going to be in a collinear, you are having to uh, push and pull in the same line of uh, force, then you are not going to have any turning effect. So you, if you want to reduce that, you need these two forces to be collinear, should be in the same line. And this is a, a three force system, a similar system what we talk about in engineering mechanics. So uh, it's a three force member what we call to be, to satisfy the forces uh, to be zero, the, the vector sum for a closed polygon should be what? Equal, it should be closed. So you can see, uh, what is that, uh, what is this one? Uh, uh, inverse is, uh, if you have a triangle law of forces, 
uh, the third force is nothing but if there are two forces uh, they denoted by the two uh, lines and the third force will be the resultant. So all together if it is closing, so the resultant is nothing but uh, the end point and the start point, distance between the end and start point of these three forces. It is zero. So your sum of all the forces is equal to zero. And uh, you can even uh, take out this one, right? And the two to have a zero sum of, uh, the satisfy the sum of torque is equal to zero as we told, if you extend these forces all should intersect at a particular point. If you extend the line of action of the forces, it should act, uh, intersect at a point, then it means it is a, what, uh, what kind of a force, concurrent force system, your concurrent force system does not have any torque at all. So if, we, if any one of the forces is not intersecting or moving away, automatically what you are going to get is you will be getting some deviated turning effect. So solving a static problem is uh, very simple, right? In a static problem, how you solve is separate the mechanism into links, consider each the free body diagram with all the active external and the constraints force on it. Apply the rules of statics to each free body diagram, which are, uh, these are the two uh, free body, this, uh, sum of all the forces equal to zero, sum of all the moments should be checked for equator to be zero. So the solution of vector equations can be by arithmetical or sometimes you can make a graphical method. Hope you have to practice the graphical method. Have you practiced graphical method? Yes. So this is a graphical approach. What you do is you have all the three forces, draw straight lines representing the vectors that, that are in proper directions and links proportional to its magnitude you draw. So this is force 1 you draw in magnitude and direction and you take the force 2 drawn in magnitude and direction and the force 3 drawn in magnitude and direction and this is, a, uh, if it is a closed, the vector form is a closed polygon called a vector loop and similarly for arithmetic approach what we do is the same if this is, a, if you want to do it in an arithmetic approach you take, measure the angle with the horizontal you make the force 1 at the theta 1, force 2 in theta 2 and force 3 is having an angle at the theta 3 which is the right horizontal, uh, horizontal right side as the zero uh, axis. So based on that you can write the, this need to be taken into two components, right? So F1 cos theta 1, so you, uh, you know the resolution of forces. What is the resolution of forces? You, you can split your force into horizontal component and vertical component. So this force is a right side upward force, you have a horizontal right side force and an upward vertical force. So the horizontal is nothing but the F1 cos theta 1 and vertical one is F1 sin theta 1. So these are very simple things what we use. The same way we write for F2 as well as F3, you, I, I think you understand. <coughs> Zero, then you will get your uh, the two component uh, equations are not uh, no longer a uh, vector calculations, they are scalar and can be simultaneously solved to find the maximum two of the following. So this is, uh, what is this two equations? From any two equations, you can find any two unknowns. So if you could, uh, for example, if you have a force system, either F1, F2 is known and F3 is unknown, or the angle theta1, theta3 is known and theta2 is unknown, you can use these two equations simply to find out what is your theta uh, F2 and what is your theta. So if we take a small example to uh, discuss about the static force analysis, right? I am not going to uh, give you more examples. So uh, more maybe you may be aware about this one. I am going to move in a very simple way. An external force of uh, 10 Newton is acting horizontal on the rocker link. So this is a, what is a, what is mechanism it is? So again, a, any other classification you can use? Yeah, crank rocker mechanism. So this is going to give you a full rotation and your, so it depends upon your length, right? It depends upon your length of your arm, you can check with and it is going to be a crank rocker mechanism. So here, this is a static, uh, we are going to do a static analysis, that means the theta is fixed. We are not going to change this theta at all, for at this position, we are going to check whether it is in static equilibrium for this moment. So uh, the, an external force of 10 Newton is acting horizontally on the rocker. Uh, link 30 mm uh, from the point B, you can see it is measured 30 mm from this point B. So find the amount of torque to be applied to the crank AB to keep the mechanism in static equilibrium. So that is the expected thing. We are unaware about, we need to understand what will be the force that we need to give on your crank 
to uh, ma maintain this in a uh, equilibrium condition. So you just to draw this diagram, what it is called as your, what diagram it is? A space diagram. If you could draw the link with its exact uh, position and its magnitude scale to a level, then this is called as your what? <coughs> your space diagram. So the position analysis uh, to find the angle of uh, so what we need is actually we need to uh, uh, know about uh, what is the angle between these two links. So the simplest way is your graphical method. You can do also an analytical method, but if a better way is your uh, uh, graphical method. Why? Because if uh, see your analytical method is suitable if you have some uh, as uh, your trigonometrical uh, relationships. You have a closed triangle or a, a quadrilateral or something else. You can divide and do it. But if you have more than four or five number of edges, actually the four bar mechanism alone is not a mechanism. If you go for a complicated mechanism with five bars, or you have some other kind of a mechanism, that your graphical method stands good. So it is better to study your graphical method than your vector, your analytical methods. So we used to give most of the students uh, work out with this kind of a graphical method. And here, so the simplest way is to draw the mechanism to scale and measure the required angles by a protractor directly from the figure. Or we can take a purely arithmetical approach. And nowadays you have CAD, you can easily draw it in CAD. Uh, what I do, I used to do, uh, give a problem for my student and I used to AutoCAD to draw all these things simply. Because the exact measurements of the angles and the lengths are easily uh, measurable from them. Hope if you, if you have an uh, exposure, you can do it, it will be easy for you to understand this. So from that you can find out what is this uh, angle phi. So it has two angles. It, 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 for this particular uh, angle theta, you may have uh, two kinds of angles, right? So this one you, uh, you can see either the link may be in this position, right, or the link uh, CD may be in this position. And uh, you have a, you can calculate what is the uh, beta tan inverse of uh, that value. You can find out what is your beta. So separate. So in an arithmetic method. What we do is separate the mechanism into free bodies and put all the acting and interacting forces. Uh, you know what is free body diagram? Eliminating any component or something else from the surroundings and replacing all the surroundings or the connectors by means of external forces. That is your called as your free body diagram, what you learn in your engineering mechanics basically. So put, put all the acting and the reacting forces, then apply the law of statics for each free body diagram. So how many free bodies you can have? You can have link 1, This uh, what is this? this is link 2, link 3, link uh, 4. So you can have 3 free body diagrams. The rest uh, another being a static member of the uh, link 1. So you, you can see that uh, uh, you draw a link here, uh, link 2 in position. And what I, it is going to give a torque like this one. And uh, this is your link 3, we are going to draw like this. And link 4, we are separating all that one. Then you have to replace that other forces. For example, here it is hinged over here, so you have two forces, uh, one in the horizontal and one in the vertical direction. And here, again, you can see there is an equal and opposite force. If you are taking C away from that, there will be a force that will be moving from 3 to 4, so that should be drawn over here, and again from 4 to 3 can be replaced. Similarly, you have X components and Y components. And this is how you have your B also, you have a horizontal component and a vertical reactions. So this is how you end up with your, so all these are individual free body diagrams for your individual members. So this is step number one is over. So next you have to go for what? Static equilibrium for individually. So this is the static equations for link 4 if you could write. Here you see there is one more force 10 newton over here. So you write the equation. Sum of all the forces in the, if it is a static equilibrium, sum of all the forces in the x direction need to be equated to zero. So what are the forces acting in the horizontal? That is Fcx and Fex and this horizontal force 10 Newton is equal to zero. So you end up with the equation of one. And again, sum of all the forces in the vertical direction is equal to zero. You get Fy is dy plus Fcy plus is equal to zero. So you see these two forces will be in mag opposite in what direction, but equal in magnitude. So again, taking moment about d, you take a moment about d. So you know how to take moment is uh, uh, any force into the perpendicular distance from the point. So this is a perpendicular line over here. So but you can see actually this is not uh, this 
this line is not perpendicular to this CX. It is little bit, a, what is that, 89.86 degree only. It is not perpendicular. So, what we need is we need to find out a, a vertical line. You draw this line, extend this line and extend this line. The perpendicular distance between can be taken as the opposite side of a triangle if you construct like this. Am I right? So, you can imagine how it will be. Actually, you have something uh, like this, right? You have a straight. So you, you, you imagine there is a straight line over here. I have drawn it is white color, right? So this is a, you make a triangle like that, and you find this vertical distance or perpendicular distance between F C X and F D Y. So that is nothing but you are if you know this length. Uh, so into the sine of the function and into the cos of the function will give you the two vertices. So based on that, you can uh, find out uh, well, this is the uh, end equation that you have. The equation has uh, two f c x and f c y. So then, so this is uh, an equation that you get uh, with this uh, moment. And uh, then uh, this is the free body diagram for your link number three. Here also you take uh, uh, horizontal force. Sum of all the horizontal forces is equal to zero. So f c f p x and f c x. Uh, two forces are there, so both are equal and opposite in direction. Similarly, for vertical, you have two forces, both are equally opposite. And, and for taking moment about B, you take this force into this perpendicular distance, and uh, this force FCX into this perpendicular distance, so you have two components that will end up with equation number. Again, if you have a static equation for link number two, so this one you can see uh, the forces are uh, two forces. AX and BX. Similarly, you have AY and BY are the two forces equal and opposite. And if you take a moment, what you do is there will be one more, one unknown. What is that unknown? We need to calculate what is the torque needed to keep it in equilibrium. So we use a torque T directly also here. And the remaining is the moment created by this FBY and the moment created by the anti clockwise moment created by this FBX. So F B Y into this distance and F B X into this perpendicular distance and that is equated to T, you get an equation of three. So now with all these three, what individual free body diagram, we arrive at different equations. These are the equations for the first free body diagram, for the second free body diagram and the third free body diagram. If you take out, we have nine equations and you have nine you can see three, six, nine components are there. So you can solve any one if it is not known. You can find out. Our idea is only to find out what is the T. So from that you can easily, if you use these equations, you can solve the equation by means you can calculate what is your F C X, F C Y, and similarly others are equal. That is your F D Y, F B Y, F A Y, F C Y. All are equal, and in magnitude. And finally you can find out what is your so nine equations, nine unknowns. This is your analytical method. Hope you, you, you have, you can see uh, how much you will time you will take to do these analytical uh, equations. What to do? Suppose. So the example, if you are making it with a graphical method, so. My class, in my class, I used to teach this one. So to to solve the same problem, either with the analytical method and your graphical method. Have you done it in classes? Yeah. Yes sir. No. So draw the mechanism in scale. Measure the unknown quantities directly from the scale drawing. Separate the mechanism into three bodies of links, scaled diagrams. State whether the link is a two force system, a three force system member, and then put all the forces and interacting forces. Apply the law of statics for each free body diagram. So now we are simply drawing the same free body diagram as similar to your analytical method. So we, are, we can identify this link two, link three is what is that? It is a two force member, and uh, your link four is a three force member, and your uh, so you can see that this is a two force member. In a two force member. How we can do is there will be a force acting 
along the uh, direction is F4 to 3, similarly from F2 to 3. And similarly here, I am drawing this force with, in magnitude and direction. You can see this is nothing but the resultant of your earlier analytical method. And F3 to 4, and similarly you have F3 to 2, and there is one force F1 to 2, and this force uh, we need to draw, but the direction is unknown. We, know, we are not sure about it because see these are a two force system for an equilibrium for what is the condition that you need forces should be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction so i am drawing if f3 is here that it is to be to have this element in equilibrium i need a force in the opposite direction in the same and it is also pulling here without creating any moment but here i am unaware about the here that is the two forces are equal and opposite but it is away from a distance you have a perpendicular distance what does it mean it is going to give a torque. So I need to give a torque in the opposite direction to balance that one. That is known. And third one, you can see this is a three force system. One force, two force. So to understand the third force, you cannot. You need to know the resultant of this first two force. Then you can find out what is the third force. That's how you can see the direction of this force number. This force direction is unknown. So to solve this, it's very simple. What we do? We extend this F three four. We draw extend this F. Okay, this uh, 10 Newton force, make a point. So, to be static equilibrium, what is the rule that we, uh, we study for three force system? All should pass through a single point. So, you draw a point from that particular point, you draw a line to this one. So, this is nothing but your direction. Again, I take all the three forces. If I draw this force, draw a line over here, draw a line over here. This is the closed system. Now you can measure this is the nothing but the direction of F34 in magnitude and direction and this is the direction of F14 in magnitude and direction. So this one is a known. So now you can substitute here F14 here in magnitude and direction. So these are the uh, resultant forces. Similarly, we are going to draw for this force also if you could draw again. So you can have extend this F32 and draw a perpendicular to this one. So you, you can now find out what will be there. Moment created by F32 and F12 both are equal and it is into one force into this distance should be equated to torque 1,2. This so F14 and F34, right? F14 and F34 are measured directly from the scale and uh, N, uh, 10N stands for 50 mm. Suppose if you draw it in graphics, you measure these distances based on that you can find out what is this one. Again, this F14 is calculated based on the scale and you can find out what will be the force of that one. And F34 can also be calculated based on that one. And for this one, I, as I told you, the torque 1,2 is, is clockwise and should be equated to your distance D into this one. That is nothing but what you do. What is the two force acting at a perpendicular distance? What is what it is called as? The couple. Good. The couple should be balanced by an opposite couple by a half. So you can find out what is the couple force is D, perpendicular distance between the two forces. So you get it F32 or F12, both are same. So we, if you multiply that one, you can find out what is F12. So by the way, you can easily. So this is your graphical method. You see how many equations we handle. Nothing, we just draw the individual things separately. We draw horizontal lines and we separate into two force system and three force system. This don't think that this can be extended only for a 4 bar system. You can extend it for a 5 bar, 6 bar. I have even tried with the 8 bar systems using a graphical method. Very simply, you can easily tackle with this kind of problem. So, this is about your static force. Any, any doubt you want to have in this one? Okay. Acceleration or change in velocity, nothing else 
we are considered, right? If suppose there is, if the acceleration of moving link in the mechanism is uh, running with a considerable amount of linear or angular acceleration, inertia forces are generated. As you know, what is inertia force? What is inertia force? The inability of a body, right? The inability of a body to change its state of rest or motion is called as an inertia force. So as you as you see, the inertia forces is more the mass, more the mass moment of inertia will be. And if the away the distance and you get a very large the mass moment of inertia based on that. These inertia forces must be overcome by the driving force as an addition to the force exerted by the external load on one. So the mechanism that does. So sigma sum of F P equal to zero, sum of tau equal to zero are no longer applicable. So the governing rule will be now you are uh, what, is, what is this one? Sum of all the forces equal to mass into acceleration is a D Alambert's principle, right? Your Newton's law. In that you can apply the Newton's law in a way that if F minus M A is equal to zero, you can call it as D Alambert's principle. And the tau equal to I into alpha. So these two conditions are the new condition. Instead of your sum, sum of all the force equal to zero, sum of all the moment equal to zero, you have to use these two equations. Now you can see these two things, the I, the I and the M are nothing but the inertial or inertial properties, what we call it is the bodies by the geometry of the weight into zero, then you will get the pleasant vehicle in the world, right? It will be that's what most of the thing, your mechanical members are always a trouble, troublesome. Your engines, it has mechanical motions. That's what people are thinking about not having a any reciprocatory motion directly, only a rotary motion like your electric motor. In an electric hybrid vehicles, you travel in an electric vehicle, right? What happens there also you have your members, there is a mechanical motion but you don't have any vibrations because the balancing and other things uh, the mass moment of inertia on the axis is properly maintained. But you see a reciprocatory mass are always creating something. So uh, how about uh, creating some concepts or something else where you want to eliminate your reciprocatory motion. So this is uh, about the D-Albert's principle permits the reduction of the problem in dynamics to one in static. So what is D-Albert's principle? Actually, a dynamic problem is a, in a motion, in a mechanism, we are not always going to have your uh, thing working always. So, but for an instant, if I need to solve a problem, a uh, what is that, a dynamic problem, I cannot move along with the problem. So, I can take instances of shots, instances of uh, shots. So, at that particular instant, but to consider the acceleration, you can use a DL numbers principle. This is accomplished by introducing a fictitious force equal in magnitude uh, to the product of the mass of the body and its acceleration. Okay, a fictitious force, what we call it as a fictitious force or sometimes it is an imaginary force into its acceleration and uh, directed opposite to the acceleration, the resulting condition is called as an equilibrium but it is a kinetic equilibrium, right? It is not a static equilibrium, it is a kinetic equilibrium. So F minus MA is, as you know, you expand F equal to MA, so MA minus MA equal to, almost you are going to make it into zero. And uh, tau equal to I alpha, equal to I alpha minus I alpha equal to zero, that's what we are trying to see. These are the two fictitious forces or torque that we are going to introduce to make it into a dynamic equilibrium. So any dynamics, you want to make it into a kinetic equilibrium, then we are going to solve the particular problem. Now, what is the difference between the static equilibrium and the kinetic equilibrium? We are going to consider the acceleration. The acceleration and uh, its uh, mass, moment of inertia, inertial force, uh, forces are going to be considered. So, uh, you see this is a center of gravity, Cg of a bar object with the M. And uh, you can see there is a sum of all the forces is acting in this particular point. And you have the acceleration in this direction, accelerator in this particular direction. And as the force is acting somewhat away, we will have one more what a rotational and a linear moment is going to happen in this one. So what you do is uh, you have this uh, angular acceleration. You have what? Linear acceleration is A and your angular acceleration is what? Alpha. So this linear acceleration, so we are going to introduce a fictitious force now here. So this is a fictitious uh, linear acceleration into mass and you have a fictitious uh, inertial uh, moment of inertia into red acceleration, right? Angular acceleration. So the meaning of the equation is indication of uh, 
the equation that is indication of a dynamic case still holds true, but equation having zero on right hand side becomes very easy to solve by the static equation. So the meaning of this equation is uh, to solve, right? If you make the right side of the equation to be equal to zero, you can easily solve this kind of dynamic problem. So the solution of a dynamic problem using the other words principle, the various steps are do an acceleration analysis and calculate the linear acceleration of the mass moment of each moving unit. Calculate also calculate the angular acceleration of each moving unit. So acceleration of uh, linear acceleration and angular acceleration you have to find out first. Then masses and centroidal inertias of each moving unit must be known before that. You need to know what's the mass and uh, what about the centroidal inertias. What is that? Because we are going to calculate the uh, angular acceleration based on that. We are going to multiply. It. So I have one fictitious force on each moving body equal to mass of that body times the acceleration, m into a minus. Direction in its mass center, direction opposite to the acceleration. Applied directly onto the center of gravity apart from the already existing forces. Add fictitious torque on each moving body equal to the centroidal inertia of that body, its times, body times, its angular acceleration. Direction of or sense opposite to the acceleration apart from the already existing. It is a rotating in clockwise angular acceleration. You have to provide the fictitious torque in the opposite direction, anti clockwise direction. Solve statically. So, this is the way we have a small example for this one. In this figure, you can see that is a double slider mechanism. Slider is two, lead, two is sliding in this A, and the slider four is uh, sliding here in this plane B. The slider B is moving right towards with a constant velocity of 1 meter per second in the x direction. Calculate the amount of force on this mechanism. Calculate the amount of force on this mechanism in the given kinematic state. So what you can see this uh, theta is here and uh, AB, the length uh, AB is 10 centimeters and uh, T is nothing but the centroidal center of gravity. A, A, G3. T is nothing but the centroid of this member 3. So AG3, BG3 is equal to 5, that means it is exactly at the center. The theta is 60 degrees, and this mass 2 and mass 4 both are in 0.5 kilograms. And this mass 3, that is the weight of this link between this A and 2, is 0.8 kilograms. And uh, I3 is uh, inertia of this member 3, is uh, mass moment of inertia 0.01 kg per kg meter square, mk square mass. So, uh, what are the things that we can uh, have with this initially? As per the problem, we have to find out what the acceleration is based on the numbers in symbols. So, velocity of A equal to velocity of B plus velocity of A with respect to B. And then we can see the velocity of A direction is known. It's going to move on the wall, and uh, then the velocity of p is also known. It is going to move in this uh, direction, horizontal axis. The velocity of uh, this is nothing but the relative velocity of p with respect to a is the velocity with which your bar is going to move. Velocity of a with respect to b, and it is perpendicular to the line a. B. As you, you might have studied your uh, velocity diagram and acceleration diagram. Velocity diagram in a space diagram, you have to make it in the opposite 90 degree. You know that you remember in a leaf, right? In a leaf, if you have two points A and B, any velocity of any point on a leaf, right? Velocity of any point on a leaf will be perpendicular to the line, perpendicular to the line connecting the point A with respect to B. You know, that is a basic concept. Based on that, you can find out this direction. So this you have studied in your kinematics. And then so now you draw the velocity of P is uh, known in magnitude and in direction. It is what? Pp is equal to 1 meter per second, 1 unit. And this is the velocity of uh, A with respect to B or P with respect to A. And this is the linear velocity of A. So velocity of A with respect to B will be moving from 
downwards or b with respect to a will be moving in upward direction. That's all. And this is velocity a is moving downwards. We close that one. So from that we can find out what will be the velocity of a. Okay. And then velocity of a with respect to b can also be calculated based on that one. Easily you can find out by measuring its length and its direction and magnitude can be. And uh, similarly, you can see uh, here, now we are interested in acceleration. Acceleration is nothing but rate of change of your velocity. So, you can see the acceleration of uh, B is equal to zero because it is moving in a constant velocity, one meter per second always. So, there is no acceleration, there is no increase in the velocity or no decrease in the velocity. And uh, you can see that acceleration of A is equal to acceleration of A with respect to B. And uh, you can take the two components, only is your, it's uh, like a rotary uh, motion. So it is a combined motion, so you have a circular motion similar to that one. You have a normal component and accelerate, what is that, uh, a tangential component of acceleration will be there. So the acceleration A is, uh, what is its direction is known. Acceleration A's direction is back is the vertical direction. Similarly, acceleration of uh, uh, the normal the normal component of uh, acceleration will be along the line and uh, the tangential component will be the perpendicular to this one. And uh, from that, this normal component, as you know, acceleration in a normal component can be written as uh, velocity square divided by modulus of the length of the link A. So this is based on that you can find out what will be the acceleration, normal acceleration tangential acceleration. And uh, this tangential acceler acceleration, so you know all these acceleration directions, you can draw an acceleration diagram based on that what is the normal acceleration A of B. It's a tangential acceleration of uh, A of B and this is acceleration of A. So you can find out the direct magnitude and direction of acceleration of A. You can measure this length by that you can find out what is acceleration. So this is step number one we have come across. What is that? To find out what is the linear acceleration of the member A, linear acceleration of member B is 0, linear acceleration of the inclined. So, tangential acceleration can also be again. So, now you see the thing is uh, we are interested because the center of gravity of this particular line it is exactly at the center. This is uh, the relationship, what is this relationship? Wherever the position in your acceleration diagram and velocity diagram, you would have seen that. The ratios of the length in the your space diagram will be always maintained in your velocity diagram as well as your acceleration diagram. Subject to you can take a scale. For example, if this g is 1 by third of this distance from A to B, similarly you can from A to B you can see 1 by third of the distance, but it is exactly at the middle, so we keep the central point as this one. So the acceleration of A G3 is nothing but half of this one. So if this is the total length, you divide by 2 and you can find out what will be the length and the tangential component. So this tangential component can be equated to length of that one, uh, length of the modulus, that is the length of AB into angular acceleration. Now the second step, linear acceleration we have calculated, now we want to find out what is the angular acceleration. We have angular acceleration only for this member, member what is that member? Member 3. So this member 3 alone has an angular acceleration, so that can be calculated. Angular acceleration alpha 3 equal to tangential acceleration divided by this length. Based on that, you can find out that many radians per second by it. So, now what we have is uh, angular acceleration and tangential, sorry, uh, linear acceleration are known. Now, what is the second step? Once acceleration is known, mass is already known, mass center is known. We have to apply the DL numbers principle that is what 50 shares forces and 50 shares moments. So, see, it's where I draw the, in the diagram, you introduce what is the direction of A it is going to move in the downward direction. So, the 50 shares force acceleration, force into acceleration, by mass into acceleration force F should be drawn in the opposite direction. Similarly, this one also is going to move in the up upward direction minus M into A. Similarly, you have the rotation, what is that one? This, this, are, this is the opposite uh, fictitious uh, moment that we are going to introduce. So, if these values already we have calculated in the earlier slides, we substitute these directly values and we again we make a free body diagram. 
in the three body diagram, we produce rather forces in magnitude and in direction is denoted. You know there will be two other reaction forces, the horizontal and vertical. So this is the total. Taking anti-clockwise moment as positive in this one. Now you can take what is that? Sum of all the f is equal to zero. Sum of all the uh, what happened? Uh, you know that the Toyota ATS, right? The Toyota ATS two three years back. If you are interested in automotive, if you are seeing, they have introduced the new silent engine. With the new silence, what that means? Earlier it was not silent. I am uh, now my friend he told that uh, see Toyota ATS is sound is very fine. Means your that is because of some vibrations. They could not see how to develop the companies. Uh, the Japanese company, always these uh, German companies, all these companies are just still they have difficulties in what? Vibrations. Vibrations are nothing but the sources are from balance. So you need to understand the balancing is very, very important. The vibrations, studying the vibrations, learning the vibrations is different. How I am going to measure the vibration. So the source of vibration need to be identified and then you have to balance it. In a wheel balancing, it is simple. They have. I was also uh, very. Uh, I, I whenever I go for a wheel balance of any car, I used to look at the machine. How it is uh, easily they are calculated. They have. They just to rotate it, and they point out there is a uh, central axis with which the wheel is rotated. The wheel will measure what is the what is the what is the, what, what is the angular uh, moment of inertia. It, it measures by deflections. So then what it does is uh, depending upon the wheel, we will balance. So we will have uh, some talks about this uh, balancing and uh, so this is uh, balancing in dynamics of uh, machine. Is very very important. Why? Because you are so uh, before uh, we start uh, balancing, or shall we discuss about vibrations? Vibrations are part of the right? So I will have some uh, because if we start, we uh, not end up with that one. Then two vibrations, one vibration, zero vibration. That is how the damping is going to take place. 
and the last one is about your acceleration. So mass into acceleration, the force is going to give you a mass into acceleration. So acceleration is concerned with the mass, velocity is concerned with the damping coefficient and your displacement is going to concern with your stiffness. So what else you want to change is that you can change that clarity. So you can alter your displacement by changing the stiffness. So if you want it, for example you have a spring and you have a weight, it is going to deflect up to this one. If you want to reduce the length of uh, that is its amplitude or if you want, you don't want to move very long, you can change the stiffness of the spring by a thick uh, coil. Right? If it is a coil spring, you understand? So similarly you can change. So you need to think in a way, right? I need an uh, amplitude of the vibration. Some component, what it has is it vibrates and it touches the body. I have uh, the machine, washing machine, I don't know, the drum, it will it will hit on the side walls, dum, 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 like that after that one. So what is my idea? I, I, my idea is one thing, I want to reduce the displacement. So what I need to do, I need to remove the spring which is there available and change the spring with what? Higher stiffness. If my problem is concerned with it is quickly uh, oscillating, so that the machine is heavily vibrating. Uh, a lot of time it is vibrating. See some vibrations even you cannot feel. For example, we do have a resonance feeling. If you are standing in a vibrator, if it is slightly vibrating, you will enjoy. If it is vibrating at very high speed, you can't even uh, I, I saw one machine from a Chinese uh, company. It is like an aku pressure like uh, thing. What he, I don't know how many of you come across that one. It is a, a delicate table over which you are asked to stand over. And it will be vibrating so that uh, they are telling that your blood will be circulated through the body in a spiral way. I asked him how, he told me uh, uh, the lady to stand over that showing her legs and she was wearing uh, that police, she was wearing that uh, police. When it was switched on, actually I found the, the, the uh, police when it was rotating her leg. So the vibration cannot be seen but uh, if she is getting standing out, so that, that is the one uh, Chinese technique by which what they do, they give you a spiral vibration, right? The vibration is vibrating and spiral is a machine. I don't know the name of the machine, I do not So this one is uh, again, I told about uh, what is that elongation or deviation from the body. Now, next is about the body is getting heavy frequency means I want to reduce the frequency means I want to reduce the velocity with which it moves up and down. So I can give you the adapting coefficient. What I did is I uh, just put the, the cut a old shoe or uh, shoe sole. I put it under. So now it's a vibration point uh, to a damper, you know, rubbers or uh, uh, some other uh, wood or something. Uh, rubber is a crest vibration damping that you can keep the vibration. And uh, I too got a problem. See, after teaching vibration, I could understand uh, what are the things I had more. One more problem is an air condition that is your split the air condition I had in the wall. Actually, uh, one day when I was speaking, it got uh, broken. Uh, there is a rota. It got unbalanced. So it is giving me uh, every night I cannot even sleep in the room. Why? Because the total body is touching the wall. So instantly if you could avoid the vibration, reduce the vibration, I took some of the small tires of the, my son's toy tires, car tires. I put some of them inside. Now I, I, I feel it is comfortable, I could sleep. So this, these are the simple things to see. Without the knowledge also you can use them. But you need to look at what are the things. You can, you can be something else solving a problem by means of understanding how the vibrations is. And you can see that one, this is a displacement and this is your velocity. So you sometimes uh, you may be, this is very simple equations, you know, in your schools, uh, rate of change of the displacement is velocity, rate of change of velocity is your uh, what uh, acceleration. You can differentiate. Sometimes you can come in a reverse way. If acceleration is measured, you want to See, you have only an accelerating measuring device. You can measure the acceleration and you can integrate over your time and you can find out what is velocity. Integrating again over time, you can find out what is the displacement. And this is uh, this is nothing. So one more thing I told about vibration can never be seen, but it can be felt. That's why you see most of the automobile companies they actually in the engine uh, specification they give you what is the decibel, what is the vibration that we make because of that what is the noise level that you hear whether it is uh, adjustable by the human 